Bills, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are back better than ever. Where would we rather be? You know the drill. You got Joey D top left shelf. You got Mikey V on the bottom right there. Fellas, welcome to the program. Welcome to the Brilliantly Dumb Show. How are we? Just great. <laughs> I'm going to need a little more than that. Joseph, how are you today, sir? I'm excellent. I'm doing great. What are you Our eating? Your friend Michael has been banged early on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah tough, scene on, tough scene on the flight home from Chicago, that is. Sure was. Sure was. What is that? A nice, uh, what is that? A walnut? I've seen a, is that more of a macadamia nut? That's a pecan. That's a pecan. Is that a pecan? A big old pecan. Yeah, you got a pecan. Fellas, I, I, let's, let's get Good into it. You, I, I, I'm going to start off with saying to me, that was the most fun I have ever had with you guys in, in Breezy Chicago. I mean, the Rayo's night will probably go down as the most special night. Um, but that to me was the most fun I have ever had with you guys at breezy chicago yeah that was <laughs> top to bottom <laughs> top to bottom uh you can't really beat that trip i sound like eddie ogeron right Whoa, now this guy. <laughs> that's just the way it's local courts have taken a beating <laughs> we had a long it was a long weekend joe a long. mike is a broken man he he, he, he tore his patella well, that's what Tore we're right. saying, anyways. Are you yeah, still limping? Meniscus, meniscus. A little, little limp, little limp going on, but we're also uh, it's we're, better because when we're I saw you, through. we're bound through. Go Tigers! You go barely... Tigers! Go Go Tigers! Go Tigers! Go, go Tigers! Fuck Alabama! And go Tigers! Go Tigers! I just sound like Eddie O. I just can't go over. Knee is good. Uh, long weekend. Listen, that was that was top to bottom, man. The pre-party, the day of, the course, the setup. Everyone had just incredible energy, and it was just, it was just an insane list. I think the guest list at the breezy itself was just from 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 fans to to other uh, you know golfers and athletes and and you know personalities, and I just think everyone really seemed to get along very well. Most of us got along very well. I think everyone was kind of on a really good vibe for the most part, and I just thought. It went so well, and that course setup was just iconic. I mean, you want to talk about going from outhouse to penthouse, from New York to to and nothing against New York, but my hole I'm talking about specifically, outhouse to penthouse with, with, with the hole that I had, our hole was rocking and rolling all day, man. It was a shit show at my Mike, hole. Mike, you've seen you've seen the um the New York tournament, um, and then you've seen this one, and, and I can tell you that in my eyes, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that was the best tournament that we've, that we've ever done. I, I mean, it, it was an absolute, now look, 27 holes was a lot of holes. There was a time. Oh, it was a gauntlet. Yeah. That was the only thing that was That's like, the cause... only thing. 27 was a, there was a time I was telling Joe, I got so hammered at my hole. Cause I thought there was like an hour and a half left. Honest yeah, to yeah, God. Yeah. I, I had the same epiphany. Hour... I had the same epiphany. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? I know I'm hammered right now, but I can carry this into the awards there. Like, I'm okay. Yes. Yes. And I remember looking at my clock and seeing four hours left. I was like, oh, my. Like, I got to dig deep here. Um, Joey D, your your thoughts? I had a blast. Um, it was it was exhausting. It was an exhausting weekend um, from start to finish. It was, um, I felt like I went like, you know, like, five, six rounds with Tyson. My body went through it. But that being said, I mean, it was a great tournament. It always is. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed having Mikey there. I did too. And I, and I think it's safe to say, like, we just don't see the guy very often. And so, like, getting to hang out with him, getting to do college football Saturday. Now he's a nutcase. Yeah, was... He's a nutcase. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the games. Well, uh, but... No, I want to address that. That needs to be addressed. That needs to be addressed, Bob. God. Because hold on, hold on, oh. hold on, hold on. Before this gets what a tough me... watch. What a tough watch. Uh, I really would go I, ahead. Can Mikey. I talk? Go. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna address this. I'm gonna nip this in the bud before Bob already tried to pretzel it into his little Instagram post where he posted me freaking out about Ohio State. I had said, and you could rip mm. receipts off of this podcast for weeks leading up to that that I was going to be in a different type of mental state for that game because that's the way I get with big-time Ohio State games. I don't get like that with the Bears anymore because they're, they're just so terrible that they're just so – like yesterday, you had to see, when we were streaming the games yesterday and I was watching that Bears game yesterday, there was zero – I had zero emotion. Like, I don't even care anymore. I'm so just dis- – 
But for Ohio State games, man, that, that puts me in a different, different kind of a place. It does. And the fact that everybody had Notre Dame and, you know, everyone was rooting for Notre Dame pretty much. A lot of people were rooting for for Notre Dame. Mr. Smigs was rooting for Notre Dame. Mr. Smigs, shout he out had, Mr. Smigs. Mr. What a Smigs guy. had, he had every witch. I remember turning and saying, Mr. Smigs, you know, Mr. Smigs, what, what bet do you had? He had like a fucking reverse teaser go. Like he had, he had, a, he had an emotional an emotional hedge. I so couldn't he, believe. He I, yeah, he had a whole list of things he bet on. Yeah, yeah. But in the end, uh, you know, that one video clip would make it seem like I'm being so overbearing and obnoxious, but that's that's just the way I watch. That's why I don't watch these games in public. I don't watch these Wait. games in public because I know how I am. And I gave fair warning about that. I gave you, very fair warning about that. Seeing Jersey Jerry go at Mikey V. Yeah, that I was good. And I will say, I, I, I will say, Jersey Jerry did get him a little riled up because Jerry was, was coming at him. So Jerry was instigating... A lot of that. And by the way, we're going to play the Jerry clip on this show, which to me is quite possibly the most unbelievable gambling rant I, I have ever heard in my lifetime. Mikey, if you and I love you to death and you you would be on the altar for me. OK, you would be on the altar for me. Well, 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 well I'm just saying that's how much I love the guy. I, Why I, do we need to even bring that up? again? I'm just saying just to show how much I think Cutsy may be turning. I think Cutsy may be turning a uh, turning a corner on that, though. I, I think, do. too. I think you guys had think, a big I think weekend. I think, I, think, yeah, I think it was I, a big weekend. Let me ask you, Joe, does the altar change now? No. <laughs> Not even, not even, not even, not even any consideration. Bro. I said it was wonderful spending time with you. And I said, you're, you're, you're a great friend to me, but what, what are we talking? We're talking about people that I've known for my entire life in, you know, like people who I have spent time with for, for tens of years. But I'm just saying like, you couldn't consider like upping the party one person. <laughs> what are we doing here, Bob? No, I mean, I'm not going to beg, Bob. I'm not. I'm not going to beg, Michael. You oh, will be invited, Michael. You will be invited to my wedding. Yo, let I, me tell you something. I will if I break wasn't bread with you. Forget about being invited. If I wasn't invited to the wedding, there would be a major. We'd have a major. I problem. said. I said we will break bread together. We will sip champagne together, and it will be a night unlike any other. Speaking of champagne. Oh yeah, we really owe, we owe Michael sponsor really, the brilliantly dumb show could be brought to you. By our good friends over at Corbell. Corbell. Possible sponsor. Chris Burnt. Oh, Clean no. champagne. Now, now <laughs> I, I would say, if you, if you, now, Joe is a very dear, loyal, loud Packer fan as well. If you gave me the option to watch 10 Packer games with Joe compared to 10 Ohio State games with Mikey V, I will watch 10 Packer games with Joe every single time. Uh, the tight end for Ohio State, every time he makes a catch, Mikey stands it up, a two All-American tight end right there. Nobody else could have Mr. any Kate Stover. opinion. That is an All-American tight end. Nobody else could have any opinion on the game. or have That's such horse shit. shit. <laughs> that is such no, horse no, shit. Because even like, you know what really bothered me that he what? did? What, what really bothered me? They're reviewing a first down. And I thought that Notre Dame had got the first down. Mikey V is saying, oh, no, they didn't get the first down. And I say, oh, I think he might have got it. Not in an obnoxious way. He goes, Mikey goes, yeah, you just go keep eating your pasta, Bob. <laughs> Nobody else can have an opinion well, will... <laughs> about the game and about what's going on. And I'll tell Bob, you this. In his, in his defense, and I'm not taking sides, you were very engaged with the dinner setting up until like the last yeah, 15 yeah, minutes yeah, of the game. yeah. Guy was too busy oh, chomping oh, down fucking Did spumoni. You know what it he is? wasn't worried about. He <laughs> wasn't worried about the fucking tight end from Notre Dame. Bob was having a great time, and I can't take that away from him. Oh, it was a great time. What a great, great time. time! It was a great spread. Yeah, but the, Bob, the you reason... you kind of got engaged like the last fifteen or twenty minutes well, because, of the game. Do you know why though, Joe? Because I was in with him for the beginning of the game, and I wanted nothing to do with it after that. So you know what? I'm gonna go into it. I really didn't. It just it, nobody else could say anything about the game. You know what I mean? My favorite was was Mikey V. I, for for his expertise and knowledge of football, he was he was jumping the gun on calls left, right, and center. Oh right. said, my! Oh, they threw God. the late flag for a face mask, and it was actually an intentional grounding, and he blew a gasket. By the way, that was a, that was a horrific <laughs> missed call. That was a horrific <laughs> yeah, missed call. So and that was that a horrific missed call, and everyone that, knows it. Everyone in that knows video, that. I did. I finally snapped because in that video, he got up again. He was yeah. Wrong you about called me goal. an idiot three times, by and the I way, said, which was I totally said, unnecessary. Been all day. You're a real idiot, man. He's You're been a doing real it. idiot. You're an idiot. 
Well, you told me to keep times. eating my. You told me to keep eating my pasta. I said that because... once, not three times. Yeah. <laughs> Telling someone to keep eating pasta and calling them an idiot three times, I'd say there's a big but, difference there, Bob. But but it it was. I'm just saying it was a different type of thing to where That's I. That's why I don't go out in public for those games. I, I you should like maybe you. I know, and I don't. I don't. But I was in a situation where there was no other choice. We were now, going to the I, again. House, there was no other choice. I I will say later in the game. Jersey Jerry had a, then a bet on Notre Dame, which he got banged on because he's the coldest gambler on the face of the earth. J- Jersey Jerry was was definitely stirring the pot, but it did come to a point where I didn't just want to watch it. I wanted to to socialize with the, with the family and be in the mix for that. So that's why I did then go over to the table, and we're gonna get to Joey D, who's got his hand up, but um, also to the Smariglio family. Quite possibly the most amazing spread I've ever seen. Holly V spreads, of course, are up there. This Mariglio fam, unbelievable. Joey D, we go over to you. I'm just, I just like to like maybe think like Mikey V. I'm a little bit concerned that some of these teams that you follow are going to be detrimental to like your health moving forward because you get so enthralled in the game. Sure, like sure. I, I think you know, I, and the Bears are are one thing. I think at this point now you realize the Bears are a lost cause. Yeah, so no, least... I'm done. I'm done with them. So like I'm not I swear I'm I swear on my kids, bro. I telling you, watching that game yesterday with Big Cat. We're just both sitting there and we're talking to each other and we're just looking at it like there's, there's a lot of talk of the league. They don't even let you, you don't even have a, a chance to get involved in the game. There's not even a chance to like even have any kind of a good feeling about but you. The had game. to know That's they were going to get blown out yesterday. You had to know that. Oh, a hundred percent. Hundred they, percent. They, they're the laughing stock of the of the league. Took as Chiefs far as first concerned. half over fourteen and a half total team points. That's you hit that by a mile. Bad. That's a winner. <laughs> yeah, you could have put that in again after you hit the first. Now, 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 now. Yeah. <laughs> so so the next day, Mikey V goes and record does the live stream with Big Cat at the Chicago Barstool office. I I probably watched more of the stream than I did even the games because that was very when well, Mikey told me that that was going to happen. That to me was to me, Big Cat's my idol. I think Big Cat is one of the best to to ever do it in this, you know, ridiculous career that we have. Big Cat's one of the best to ever do it. So to watch the stream, I thought was fucking awesome. Let Didn't me tell you something. Short? Big Cat, no, no. So we watched the one o'clock, the first half of the threes, and then Big Cat went and recorded PMT. Um, but then we came back for the night game, but then he was recording PMT during the second half of that game or whatever. We, we, we didn't do the second half of the four thirty games. We, we, we cut it, but bro, this guy, let me tell you something. This guy, the reason he is where he is, this guy was doing work. An intern would be doing at fucking, he was fucking grinding the entire time on his laptop, fucking right. Blogging this like, like really like you could see why, he made it, he's made it to the point where he's made it because this guy is a fucking grinder, dude. And to be as involved in everything as he is and to still be doing that and to still be wanting to do all that work and still wanting to be recording a podcast at that hour and then still staying until the end of the night games and he's there at 11 o'clock in the morning. I mean, dude, I'm beat the fuck up from yesterday. That's a long day, especially being on that camera the whole day. That's a long, long day. Yes, and to then record the a pod in the middle of that is just outrageous. I mean, yeah. good for him. Nope. Good for him. Yeah, and he's been doing it for such a long time, and he doesn't put himself above anybody. Like, obviously, nope. he's the number two guy. He's one of the highest ups there in Barstool. He just cashed out for a ton. He he's so humble. You would never know it. He doesn't put himself above. And I just I idolize the guy. I I I really do. He's hysterical. People yeah, think his, that we're brothers or some shit. I, you his, guys do. You guys do look alike. I mean, he's my. Remember yeah, after the Packers, little, I don't think. I don't think they do though. Like now seeing him in person, like they're very very different. I think. I, oh, I don't I, know. To me, anyway. I, I don't I know. Once s- in a while, I could see it, but maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I could, not as yeah, much as I, I used to. I used to think that a lot, and then not so much anymore. I don't know. I could. I could definitely see. I, I definitely see some sort of resemblance to it for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt the Brilliant Dumb Show to let you know that the Brilliant Dumb Show is brought to you by the fine folks over at Athletic Greens. I use Athletic Greens every single morning. It gives me better gut health, more energy, an optimized immune system, and you just cannot go wrong. It's a terrific way for me 
to start my day. Athletic Green supports better sleep quality and recover, supports mental clarity and alertness. You cannot go wrong. It's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every single day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. Just one scoop into some water and you're good to go. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash dumb. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash dumb to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Get Athletic Greens today. And then the thing that I want to play that I got to get into, because I, I actually think it's worth it to play the entire thing. I think it's one of the funniest things. Jersey Jerry, who obviously dear friend of the pod, had an absolute meltdown um, after the Notre Dame game. Notre Dame was down 10. Jerry hasn't hit. He's 0 for his last 20 bets. He puts in a live bet. On Notre Dame to come back, he got what did he get that Mikey plus three eighty? Yeah, he yeah. got a good number. Yeah. And he puts a fortune on it. He can't hit a bet and then loses that game the way. And then he said, oh, "Joe, you saw him go out to the car to snap." He well, he seemed very composed when we when we said bye. He was kind of quiet. And then I when we were leaving to get the Uber, I saw the teller ride was right outside, like parked on the street. And he was just sitting in, in, in the in the front seat. I didn't know what he was doing. I, I think he was just like melting down. I, I I don't know. So, Mikey, did he put in a bet all at all yesterday? Um, I don't know. Uh, I you can, you I would say, celebrating I, would, I, would say I don't. I, I don't. He definitely didn't openly put in a bet yesterday. Yeah, he he. However, no. we so that pick that we went nuts on on the barstool gambling page the was Austin. his. He gave the Calvin Austin touchdown prop, and what happened was, me Big Cat took Devonte Adams to score a touchdown, Calvin Austin to score a touchdown over Calvin Austin total yards over Devonte Adams total yards, and then Big Cat had a bunch of other stuff, but I had those four in a parlay. But what I wow. thought I had done when I put the parlay in was anytime touchdown score, but I didn't. I accidentally put it in as first quarter touchdown oh. score. So they had a score in the first quarter. No, 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 Joe. That's better. So, oh, it, it was the first the quarter. Odds are, the odds were skyrocketed because of how m- much more difficult, obviously, that is to hit. <laughs> so, so when that hit, I mean, I just, I lost my freaking, I lost my mind. I mean, I went insane. I went insane because that was, uh, that was a great hit. That was a great hit. So we're gonna we're gonna play the the Jersey Jerry clip. So then he goes, and I wish he had a camera on this so you could see his face. And I sent it to Joe when I had saw it. Jerry goes on an just an all time Jersey Jerry rant, and him announcing um, that he is going to quit gambling. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna play that rant now. Big ticket, if you could go ahead and fire that up. I got I gotta, I gotta get this off my chest. I got, I got to get this off my fucking chest right now. Where'd my Twitter space go? All right. I got to get this off my chest. And I, and I really don't, and I, listen, I really don't give a fuck who says what. I really don't give a fuck. Number one, I want to preface this by saying this. I'm the coldest gambler on the planet. That's number one. That's number one. Number two, I want to say this. That might be, might have, that did, that, no, no, that is, that's the worst beat of my whole entire career, sports gambling. That is the worst beat I ever fucking been through in my life. I, everybody's talking about Ryan Day this, Ryan Day that, the, the, the post game speech. I don't give a fuck what a, what he said about the guy that got one foot in the grave already. I don't give a fuck about that part, okay? I, did anybody see number two drop the interception? Did anybody see that? I mean, I mean, you couldn't have drew it up better. You couldn't have drew it up better. 
Notre Dame, listen, Notre Dame should be ashamed. I don't, they should be ashamed of the, that was, they had no business, no business losing that game the way they played tonight. They, they were incredible on defense. They ran the ball great. When they needed to make big plays, they made big plays. And listen, I'm not a Notre Dame fan. I'm not an Ohio State fan. I don't give a fuck about either team. I bet the wrong side. Yes. Yes, I did. But nobody besides me on Twitter is talking about this fucking Notre Dame number two collapsing and not making that fucking play. That's pathetic. That's disgusting. You're a safety for the Irish. The fighting, the fighting Irish. You're supposed to have some sort of fucking hand. That was downright fucking embarrassing. Embarrassing. How do you allow that team to go down the field like they did? How do you give up fourth down? How? How does that, how do you give up that fucking play, that pass? Right by the goal line. How do you do it? That's the only place they can throw the ball. In that situation. That was one of the worst beats I have ever, ever, ever witnessed in my entire life gambling. My entire life. My entire life. So you know what you do when that happens? When a beat like that happens... You got to step away. You got to just step away. You got to just step away sometimes and say and say to yourself, when's enough enough? I've been getting fucked in the ass for the last three weeks. They've been fucking reaming my ass nonstop. They've been fucking me so hard. I can't take it any longer. They, they've literally, the books, Literally, the last three weeks have said to themselves, oh, JJ, Jersey, Jerry, Barcelona Sports, that guy. Yeah, bend him over, bend him over, spread his ass cheeks as far as they can go, and let's fuck the shit out of him. Let's fuck him. That's what, that's what I've been going through for the last three weeks. I've been getting bad beat after bad beat after bad beat. So guess what? I'm sorry, Barstool Gambling Company. I can't do it no more. I just can't. I, I just simply, I just can't do it anymore. It is, th- that, that game, that game is going to haunt me for the longest time ever. And it only gets worse. After a loss like that, it always gets worse. Always, always, always gets worse. That was one of the worst things I have ever been through in my entire life. In my entire life, that was one of the worst, worst beats I have ever, ever, ever encountered. And people are mad. Oh, Jerry, they're just kids. They're not just kids. Shut the fuck up. They're not just kids. They're football players. They're men. M-E-N. You know what that spells? That spells men. Men. Grown men. They're not kids. Stop saying they're kids. Because they're not kids. They're men. But I got nothing left. I got nothing left. I got nothing left. I'll root for my Steelers tomorrow. I'll get my heart broken again, maybe. Who knows? But... That was, that, that was, that was actually disgusting, disgusting the way Notre Dame, and hey, I'm not taking anything away from Ohio State. They played to the last snap, they played to the last snap, they scored on the last play, credit to them, Notre Dame, they should be ashamed. That coaching staff, those players should be ashamed at what they did the last minute of that game. Because that was downright fucking pathetic. Pathetic. P-A. How do you spell pathetic? P-A. P-A. T-H. 
P A T H E T I C. Pathetic. That was pathetic. So, what do we do now? What do we do now? Well, parked in front of my house. We go inside. We take a shower. We shut the phone down. And we go to bed. And we go to bed. And tomorrow's another day. But best believe me, I might have to make a statement. I'm retired. I'm retired. I'm retired from sports gambling. I'll say it now. I'm uh, Breaking news. You want to post it, post it. I'm retired from sports gambling. That's it. That's it. I'm just retired from sports gambling. It is what it is. Maybe I'll be back next year. Who knows? I, I've officially retired from sports gambling. I'll see you guys in the funny papers. Just in all, I mean, it's it's one of – Mike, have you heard the whole thing? So I haven't heard the whole thing, uh, but um, I know from the, the the first part of the clip was was hysterical. And then the fact that he – Yesterday, he had, like, a graphic made up where it was, like, him on, like, he superimposed his face on something. He's like, I got one more in me. That was, like, the graphic. So he wanted to be back so bad yesterday, and he just held off. I mean, he held off as long as he could hold off. And then, obviously, his Steelers got the win last night, so that was good to see for him uh, because it was it was fun rooting for them because, I mean, it's just no fun rooting for my team anymore. And, Bob, the Jets, the Jets are in the same boat now with Wilson. It's oh, like you don't even want to watch the game. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's so brutal. At least the Jets Bobby had the game. under, though. But yeah, I sure yeah, did. Good. Yeah, I, I good. sure did. Good. Joey D has been ripping me pick after pick after pick. He's hot. He's really hot right now. And anytime there's an under, he knows to give me a call because the unders I could do. It, there's nothing better to, to bet. I just I can't get enough. I, I like. Bob I like. A little, I like a little under tonight. I would love to do you like the I, under tonight. I, I like the under in the Philly game. In you do, Bucks huh? Game, I sure do. Okay. I sure do. See, I'm, thinking oh, about it out. I'm thinking about giving it out as an only subs pick. Obviously, it'll be the game will be over by the time everyone hears this. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards the under. I'll have the final decision on that. But yeah, wow, that's where Michael, we Go had ahead, a good Jim. day yesterday. You've been, running, you've been ready good. Four and one yesterday, NFL. Uh, Big Cat was tailing a lot of those picks. A lot of the guys in the studio. That's everyone feel was good. riding. Everyone was riding each other's like. Like I didn't really want to do some of the stuff, but like once they everyone's putting it in, it's like all right, I'm gonna ride, I'm gonna ride. When you have a, so, a group of guys and people are willing to ride together, yeah, there's fun. nothing better. It's no. really it's like the camaraderie. Like we went in that that DraftKings sports book next to Wrigley Field. By the way, if you if you live in the Chicago area, that place is unbelievable. But when you're food riding was great. together, food was great, beer was ice yeah. cold. That that Yellow artichoke dip everywhere. that they had, that spicy one was magnificent. Good. <laughs> magnificent it, really it was very was. good for for like a bar scene but like we 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 were riding a couple things which all hit by the way and when it does it's like it's it's just fun because you're all in it together you know we're in that DraftKings thing and it's like vibes were high you're all rooting together it's like you have like you have the brotherhood with you like it feels like you have a better likelihood to hit when you have multiple people riding with you Plus two, you know, the losses don't feel as bad because you're at least sharing the loss with everybody. You know what I mean? Like you're not the only one that well, you have lost. some lone wolves out there like Jet who will just simply never tell you what they're Yeah, right. no. I mean, by the way, you thought, <laughs> you thought Jerry was a pretty cold gambler. Jet started firing out picks on his Twitter. He's over for his last 10. Oh, I, no. I, no I, is he really? I have never won a golf bet. That Jet has given me. I am 0 for 50 on golf bets that he's given. <laughs> I've never won. But then at some point, you got to hold yourself accountable, Bob. You keep riding and you yeah, keep losing. Yeah, like, but, I mean, at some point, you got to. Yeah. But, but you know what'll happen? The one that you don't ride with him on, he'll hit. Yeah. I don't know That's if he's going to hit, man. Works. Usually I'd say yes, but I don't, <laughs> I don't think he's hitting anytime soon. I oh, really yeah, don't. Yeah, um, all right, boys, let's go ahead and let's get into our buy and sell segment. Um, why don't we go ahead? What did you like of the week that you saw? What did you not like that you saw? Uh, Mikey V, you want to give us a start? Man, this is a tough one. There's so many things I could buy, and there's so many things that from, from the weekend, there's so many things I could buy from the weekend. There's so many things I could sell from the weekend. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sell. Uh, man, oh, man. Joe, you want to go? Do you know what you're going to fire off yeah, right away? Yeah, I'm okay, go ahead. This week. Let Joe go because I'm 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 still I got so much in my brain going on. Go ahead. Listen, Joe. I I I don't want to come across you know as as ignorant or like too too tough on people, but 
I, I got to hold these young kids to a standard that should be held by everyone. And I hate, by the way, I'm going to preface this. I hate when you say, when you talk about college athletes and people say they're kids. And by the way, in Jerry's rant, he goes over it to say, awesome. they're it's not awesome. kids. They're adults and they are bourgeoning into superstars who are going to become millionaires. So I am going to sell this week college kickers. I, I don't understand for the life of me when you have one job and one job only how so many of these young kickers can be so horrifically bad. This Clemson kid, 29 yard field goal to pretty much put them in a position to win a massive game against Florida State who is who is ranked and who is, you know, for all intents and purposes, on the up and coming for people to make the playoff. A massive game for this Clemson team. And this young man has one responsibility, to walk onto the field and make a 29-yard field goal. We ain't talking 49, 39, 29 yards. How is this kid on the team when he shanks a field goal? And during the game, I looked at Mikey and I said, Mikey, we need this right now. Because for some reason, I just thought, you know what? If this anybody could screw it up, gonna get, this is I'm get not trying to. Now. I'm not trying. Mike, then why is it being brought up if I'm not going to be thrown Because it's so under absurd. Why? Because your reaction is absolutely right. It's a 29 yarder, and you looked at me and you said it's a chip shot. He's going to make it, and it's the kid shot. shanks it outrageously. And you know what? It's so often that these kids nowadays they can't kick the football. Like, I'm not even asking for a 40-yarder, a 29-yard field goal, and this kid loses the game for everybody. And I go on a tyranny, and, and, and everybody's like, oh, it's just a kid, you know, he missed. No, it's more than that. This is a massive game for the, for, uh, for the program, for the school, for everything, and this kid should be ashamed of himself. And it's not just him. It's kickers all around the country who My are just absolutely brutal. How they're making these teams, I don't understand. You have one job. Meanwhile, the quarterback has to throw, run, duck, dodge, dive, freaking everything else. And all these kids need to do is kick a field goal through the post. Mikey, what did he, what did Gutsy, and I've heard him say it before, what did he get up and yell oh, at the TV? Yeah. He said yeah. something. Yeah, he I said, remember vividly. He said yeah. something so. so the, kid misses, the kid misses the field goal. And in the middle of the whole table, there's like, I don't know, eight other people at the table. There's DraftKings rep there. There's, there's you know, our some of our bosses there. And he just stands up and he screams, you should hang your head in shame. Hang your head in shame. No, I actually said this kid should be ashamed of himself. He should bury his head in the sand. No, you oh, said yeah. hang your head in <laughs> shame, Joe. It was hanging. Well, maybe I, I might. I might have said both. Feel good. He did, Very good. He, either way. He By did. the way, I think I took it pretty good. I didn't. I didn't go. I didn't explode. I was quiet for the Joe, first. You minute. absolutely. Joe, you, you, know, you explode. You absolutely You one hundred percent. Listen, I probably would have exploded too, but you one hundred percent. Yo, but what do you? Oh. What do you mean you didn't explode? <laughs> <laughs> for the first minute, I was in such shock, Bob. I didn't say anything. I was just like this. I couldn't believe what I was witnessing with my eyes. How it's just it? a shame. And you know what? Here's the other thing is that in the, in the NFL level, kickers are incredible. They barely miss. You saw yesterday somebody made a 62-yarder, 55-yarder, well, yeah. 57. That's... So where is the gap coming from when these kids are coming from college? They can't make a 30-yard field goal. And then they're expected to go into the NFL and hit 50s with their eyes closed. Do you know – Um. You remember the name? I the the one that I couldn't wrap my head around. Do you remember Robert Aguero from Florida State? Yeah, yeah. was it was his first name Robert? He went with the I, I remember how big he was the he first was round draft pick. Yeah, he, he was, was unbelievable. He was the was first round scam. draft pick. The guy couldn't miss a kick in college, and I know this is contrary to what you're saying, Joe. Usually, it is the other way around. And then he got to the NFL, yeah, and horrible. he couldn't make a kick. So I well, wonder. That's the inverse. That's the inverse. What, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it, and then he couldn't make a kick, and I don't know if it's the different football. Well, if, there's it, a lot of pressure when you're a first round kicker. Yeah, I mean, it just yeah, it, but it, still it, though, that's crazy. Yeah, no, no, no make 100%. A kick, and he's not. I'm gonna tell you who else, by the way. There was Mike Nugent, who was a Jets kicker for a long time. Sure. Bob. He was he was legitimately they were they had like a nonsensical Nugent for Heisman campaign in Ohio State when he played there like they were so like because he was so good in college 
And he wasn't that good as a pro. He just wasn't. He just wasn't like a great kicker. And it's bizarre when they're that good in college and they're just not in the NFL. Get it. The ball is a little bit different. I think the dimensions of the post, I don't know if they're still different, but they used to be, I think, a little bit different. If I'm not mistaken, either height-wise or width-wise, a little bit different. The ball certainly is different. The hash mark lineups are a little bit different. Um, but yeah, yeah, college and kicking is brutal right also now. Also, too, awful, I mean, man, a lot and of it affects the games too. Like, who these are you telling, bro? Are New Year's decisions. Eve last year, I watched my kicker sail one fucking fifty yards off to the left to oh, lose. But that was a, a long kick. That was a, that was a fifty-three. Yard. It was a, oh, that's a, a long kick. kick. Yeah, just it was nowhere near. If you're gonna, miss it wasn't a kick. even close. No, that <laughs> sucked. You, you didn't have a moment to even think. You know that? <laughs> no, no, you really didn't. It just it was. There's nothing worse. But a lot of these college atmospheres are more hostile than the NFL, depending where you are. You know what I mean? It's it's pretty yeah, wild. Bob, if you had one job, if you had one job and you couldn't do it in in any other in any other workforce like setup, like if say you were at the front desk and you didn't know how to check someone in, like you couldn't complete a check in. How long do you think you would be at that front desk for? Yeah, well, at, at a- I just think that. We got to hold them to a higher standard in every other facet of the world. If you can't do your job, you get replaced. I uh, these kids can't make a kick, but they still stay on the team. It's it, it's it's mind boggling to me. You start ever. getting some guys from Australia and here, there's uh, you know, rugby union guys who could kick the ball through the hoop. First ever job I had, Pizza Palace. I could not get a hold of the cash <laughs> register, honest to god. I, I couldn't figure out the cash register, and eventually they just I thought your first go. job was the gas pump. That was the okay. second after I got fired from from Pizza Palace. And you got fired both back to back. Sure did. Pizza Palace. <laughs> yeah, Pizza, yeah. Palace. Pizza Palace, Randolph, New Jersey, and uh, yeah, my dad got me the job, and because uh, he knew the guy, and eventually the guy called my dad. He's like, "Look, he just can't figure it out." Like, just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, true story. Oh. True story. Hey folks, Joey Colcuts here. Wanted to take a brief moment out of the episode to let you know that we have partnered with the good people over at DraftKings because football is simply more fun when you're in on all the action. So here's what you gotta do. Download the app now and sign up with the code DUMB, D-U-M-B. New customers can bet as little as $5 and receive up to $200 instantly in bonus bets. What a time to be alive. Only on the DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NFL. When you use code DUMB, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, licensee partner Golden Nugget Lake Charles, 21 and age up, varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario, see sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Jeez. Um, my, um, my cell, if you don't mind, Mikey, I'm going to jump ahead. Go. Oh, well, um, well. my sell is going to be, first off, I'm not bagging the city of Chicago. Cause I was actually blown away by Chicago. That was the first time I've ever been. I loved it. I, I really did. I thought it's it was nice awesome. City. Yeah, really, really. You know, it's so much from what we saw 10 times cleaner than New York city, not even close. Man, um, way cleaner than LA. That's, that's what they sure. always say. Yeah. yeah. I, it really, I thought Chicago would be similar to New York city. Not at all. No. No, that's the whole, that's the big like appeal with Chicago. They always say it's, it's like the cleanest big city. That's yeah, really, really liked it. But with that being said, um, we had our five iron event before the breezy event. And um, a couple fans came by and brought us a Lou Malnati's pie, which is their signature deep dish pie that they're known for. Apparently you got to wait like an hour. Like you got to really pre-order it and whatever. And I really appreciate it because I really wanted to, to try it. I, I don't get the deep dish, man. I, I'm selling deep dish. And and apparently I thought the sauce was good. I thought it was pretty good overall. But it, it's just the overall concept of the deep dish. It's such it's all just a big casserole. Like it's yeah, but you it's, got to hold it to a different standard. You're comparing it to a New York slice. But you that's what I'm it. saying. To me, it just yeah. doesn't to me it's you not have even, to you have to judge it into independently, not like compare it to a New York slice. It just it it does like I I couldn't imagine not to say that I wouldn't eat it because I would, but I, I would never get excited for that type of pizza rather than like a New York slice. You know what I mean? 
I yeah. think that if you're if you just if you're not into that now, I think that the the dough itself. I think a lot of people get like they freaked out. The deep dish, like the dough is going to be too doughy. I actually think it, the phyllo dough or whatever dough that is that they use is actually mm-hmm. it's not bad. I think it's very like fluffy and light as opposed to like you think it's too thick when you're going to bite into it. It's not like eating a Sicilian pie out here. It is lighter. Um, but yeah, I'll just never be a deep dish person ever. I like thin crust pizza. I always will. I mean, I, I I'll eat the deep dish. Don't get me wrong, and I'll enjoy it. But I a hundred percent prefer regular thin sliced New York style. Not even close. Mm, not close. Yeah. My opinion. And that, by the way, I mean, I'm court. Of course, there'll be other spots where people will recommend that you can go. Umalnati, from what I'm concerned, that's supposed to be like the the go to, like one of the. You know, what was solid was uh, the Portillos. Joey D had Portillo's. Now that I feel yeah, like that I'm good. disappointed I didn't get to try because that sounds like it could. You want to talk about solid, by the way. How about the Smeriglio family, Mr. Smigs, yeah. bringing out sausage and pepper sandwiches for like a starter. Part. It was almost like a sausage and pepper slider, wasn't it? Yeah. The way yeah. he sure. did it. Sure. He sure. did it. That was very yeah. smart of him. With very the normal well, charcuterie world. board to begin with. The charcuterie, charcuterie board. board. Uh, I could have gone. I could have just gone off on that to begin with, but I knew there was so much more food coming. The pasta, the meatballs, homemade meatballs, the cutlets oh. with the little capers on them. That oh, was fantastic. Yeah. And, and the chicken cutlets. Did you try the, spa, the spaghetti, spaghetti alle olio, too? They brought that out at the end. Sure did. And it had like a little spicy little, oh, oh it was great. That That's might have been one of the best chicken cutlets I've ever had. It was done differently. Yeah, it, it was, was it really was, It was done differently. It had, a different, it had a different taste to it. It had a different taste to it, those chicken cutlets. I don't know if it was the capers. Um, or if it was like a little more it's lemony, like a lemony sauce on it, yeah, yeah, a little different. A little that different. has to be that has to be the first time I've ever stayed in a city because of the spread coming that that day. Like Next, you would have been out Saturday morning early. Sure, yeah, yeah. Not even going, Saturday. We had to meet DraftKings. Well, that's, that's what true. I'm saying. But Jet and Ticket had gone. Like Jet went and left at night. To where that was an option to get home for football Sunday the next day. I wanted to stay so bad to stay to to have that night with everybody, and I, it was one of the most enjoyable. I mean, that was a blast. They, they, let me let me tell you like something. Kings. They, let me the, tell you. Mom and that's dad what I was so going nice. to say, bro. They just didn't stop. I felt bad. They kept asking between between Smigs and then his mom and his dad. Like they kept asking me, "You need something?" Even at the end, before we left, they had, like bottles of water for us as we left to go in the Uber. The like alcohol, the, the then, Rocky then Road Gelato, the Rocky Espresso Road Espresso Martini. That was, that was oh yeah, martinis. that's true. To end yeah. the night off, yeah. that's and then true. and it was just like nonstop. Yeah. They had the stuff. They had, they were doing stuffed homemade stuffed blue cheese olive martinis. Dirty I didn't martini. do one of those. I regretted it. Serious? Yeah, at the very beginning, Mikey I spotted one. one out of the corner of my eye. I said, "Is that blue cheese stuffed olives, Mrs. Now, She's like, "Oh yeah, absolutely. Here, let me make you one of those." She's thank, an angel. Thank God, Mikey. There was nothing. One of the lowest feelings I've had in quite some time, and I've had some low ones. There was nothing worse than walking into their house empty handed and then watching the people that they invited bringing bottles of wine and beer and looking at them bringing that in was the most horrifying. It was awful. It was really awful. Thankfully, Mikey went to a a liquor app to get the liquor delivered. And he bought a bottle of Dom, which we still got a Venmo for you, by the way. A four hundred dollar <laughs> bottle of Dom just to get something. Uh, yeah, and, and you know what? Though, fight. so so here was the thing with that though. People got to understand. We went to that meeting with DraftKings, and then it's an hour ride from Wrigleyville yeah, to no the Smigs' house. We couldn't go back to the hotel. We certainly couldn't find a liquor store. We had no idea where we. We were. could barely get the Uber. We couldn't yeah. even. Be, yeah, right. We could barely get an Uber. And by the way, that Uber driver, man. Oh, I mean, screw that! That was, was obnoxious. Driver, it, was it was obnoxious. obnoxious. It, it was, was obnoxious. obnoxious Bob. He was driving. You might give you. gotta explain the story. He was driving a van that he treated like it was a Rolls Royce. Yeah, right. And meanwhile, there was empty bottles of water all over the floor. Right. Mikey and opens the door to, to get in the front I seat. I open the door. And just by the way, the shit out of it on the curb. Okay, because the <laughs> curbs in Chicago, as we know now, are like double regulation height curbs. I found that out the hard way. Right? <laughs> so, so I open the door. It scrapes barely scrapes the bottom of the door. The guy jumped out of the car. He ran around. Like, I, like he was driving a G-Wagon. Now, no disrespect. <laughs> I would never intentionally try and ding your car up whether it was a 97 Camry or a brand new Escalade. I wouldn't try. I would never do it intentionally. 
he jumped out of that car and gave me a look and muttered. Well, on no, he didn't even say that. He said, Oh my God. Yeah. And like, ran bro, around. And I looked at it. There was not even a single scrape. There was nothing. So then when I got into the car and I see all the empty bottles all over the floor, I go, Here, is this yours? And I handed it to him. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't made, hear that. Made a comment to wow, he said, Here is this yours. I didn't want to step on your bottle and damage your, your, yeah. your bottle. I didn't I, say there was nothing about damaging the bottle, Bob. That's an addition. You took That's a, an add-on. You, you, That's you, an add-on. Meanwhile, Perez was in the back almost dead, yeah, lying Perez, across Perez. the back seat. Perez on Saturday was just... <laughs> this was... guy, when Perez is hung over, you don't get him back till 5 or 6 o'clock at night. When you, when you right. have a hungover Perez, you don't get him for the whole day. He's not with you that day. He was with us, but he was not with us. We did do a uh, we did do a cut for a Callaway clip thing. You would have sworn he had to run a marathon just by sitting down there and saying a couple words. He looked like he had to go through hell's handbasket. Well, yeah, I you know I will say <laughs> in, in in his defense. <laughs> oh man, was, poor guy was struggling. Yeah, I was so. He got a sponsorship with Pedialyte, Joe. We will. He take, could be the spokesperson for Pedialyte, Perez. We will take anything. I tell you what, I might have another fish on the line. By the way, oh, what's the other fish? Oh, we got another my, spot. My good Hello. friends, I got a DM today from our good friends over at Dude Wipes. Oh, Dude Wipes, that's see, that's a gentlemen. good. That's really good. That's Don't a, you use you use them? No. I've done oh, I've done something. I with never that. I never step out of my house with it without a packet of Dude that's Wipes. That's right. No, you don't. No, you, and I you never really? will. And I never Where do you will. put them in your back pocket? Oh, yeah, Joe, who cares he's, where I put them? I put them in a bag, put them in my pocket. Joe, Joe, yeah, no, no, no. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course. He uses it all the time. Yes. All the time. Really? Do. Yes. 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 All yes. The, all That's the, fascinating. Yes. Joe, we oh, had a whole I discussion them, about wet wipe use. Do you use them, Bob? You haven't seen me use them on the golf course? No. All the time. Yeah. All the time. I, I I will not step onto a course Wallet, unless I have keys, phone, dude wipes. Dude wipes. That's right. I I never even bought one before. You, you guys, well, that's going to change. Want to get in? You guys want to get into our sponsorship? The Burnley Dumb Show is brought to you by Lean Cuisine. Keep it right, <laughs> keep it tight, but eat good. The Burnley Dumb Show brought to you by Lean Cuisine. Cutsy, you're up. Huh? You're up. Your turn. Fake sponsors. But Mikey hasn't done his buy or sell yet. Mikey V, fake sponsor. Go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, the Brilliantly Dumb Show is brought to you by Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. Do the do or don't do the do. But when you're with us, do the do. <laughs> Joey D, go I, ahead. Brilliantly Dumb Show is presented to you by Budget Breaking Muffler. Budget, budget, Bob. Budget, budget. <laughs> I don't know, but what are we doing here, man? <laughs> budget, budget. That's what we're going to do. Every single week, we're going to do fake sponsors till we can get a core bell, till we can get That's a dude right. wipes. Mikey right. V, it's by yourself. It's almost depressing, by the way, that we're doing it. It is. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it is. is. But you know what? We're going to, I'm telling you, we got, we, we got some, we got some talking to do. We we're going to get we something. Do. We're going to get I something. Need the, I need those addresses, by the way. Side note. <laughs> um. Anyway, <laughs> Um. so. I'm going to sell, I'm going to sell based off of my experience today in the airport. I documented it today in the airport. I'm not talking the delays and the gate changes. That's one thing. Oh, here's a nightmare. Everyone knows this. Everyone says it, but this guy on this plane who delayed the flight even more because he bought a seat for his musical instrument. Let me, let me just say this, man. Like, I get it. That cello. So the guy had a cello and I put the picture up there. And it, if you saw the picture, it's massive. It's like bigger than this guy. But I mean, like, I, I understand maybe you're afraid to check it, but there's got to be some kind of like limit to what we're allowed to do on these planes, because these planes just aren't built to accommodate things like that. They're just not. You could barely fit a person in a coach seat, let alone a baby grand piano that you're carrying around on your back. I thought it was a cello. Like it was. It was a cello, Joe. I'm just saying the thing is so massive. It looked like a baby grand piano on this guy's back. Now, the Better, guy. Yeah. So here's the thing. Guy sits down and coach, and all of a sudden, captain says, we're ready for takeoff. We're ready to go. Sorry about all the delays today. I'm like, fuck yes, let's go. Guy comes storming up the front aisle, and he's like, listen, and I hear him over talking uh, talking to the, uh, the stewardess, 
and he's like, listen, uh, this guy's got this instrument here and it's taken up two seats. I cannot fly on this plane. I, I can't do this. He says, I can't. And the guy's not wrong. The cello took up two seats. The guy only paid for one and it's taken up two seats. He goes, listen, I just want to deboard the plane. So the guy wasn't even trying to like make it like, I'm going to, you know, you got to throw the guy off the plane. You got to make him buy another ticket. You got to get rid of his instrument, whatever. He was ready to take the bullet. And he did. He did. This guy actually got off the plane and refused to ride. And they credited him his money back. It created like another 25 minutes of delay. You shouldn't be allowed to buy a seat for an inanimate object. You just shouldn't. It shouldn't be allowed. It's it's preposterous. It's ridiculous. If it's a, If it's a service dog, I get it. If it's another human being, I get it. But to be able to buy a seat. That's like if I if I bought a flat screen TV in Chicago and I wanted to bring it back to Jersey and I'm going to buy a fucking extra seat to put a flat screen. It's outrageous. So it's were outrageous. people were, were people on the plane yelling at him? Oh, uh, the cello guy, living at the cello guy. Everyone yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're, so were people getting upset? Well, it was all the way in the back. I didn't hear the extra chatter. I only heard the guy who got screwed out of his seat. But I got to tell you this, I'm sure they they weren't happy with cello guy. I could tell you that. Yeah, I mean, look at what yeah, but how is he supposed to travel with his How's Check it. Travel? Check the cello. Joe, so are Check you taking cello. are you taking the side of cello guy? No, I'm not. I'm just saying. Obviously, it's a very. What I mean, it's a, obviously a very important part of this young man's life. He paid for the seat. It's not like he got it for free. But it took up two seats, though. He should uh, have to pay for the whole. Well, oh, then the airline's responsible for that, not the <laughs> yeah. cello guy. Mikey, yeah. would you like to respond to that? But wait, yeah. wait, what exactly are you selling? Are you selling cellos? Yeah, what are yeah, what are I you am selling? Sell, I am selling an airline selling seats this to a confusing. non-human being. What about I'm my selling, dog? I sold seats to my dog. I, what did I just say about animals, Joe? I said something with a heartbeat is acceptable. You can't sell a seat to an inanimate object. It's like if I wanted to bring a fucking cactus onto the plane and I'm going to buy a seat for the cactus. <laughs> Somebody's got a, a peacock on a plane once. That's it's, an animal, Joe. It's got a heartbeat, the peacock. But that's ridiculous. It's also ridiculous. Yes. We have to, we, the airlines have to do something. These, these planes have got to just, they can't sell those seats. So I'm going to, I'm going to sell selling seats to, to non, to non-living entities. You can't sell seats to a non-living entity. It's Mikey, this is, this is, this is totally off, off subject here. But like, I was just thinking like, do you get upset at dog owners? Like if, if you're walking on the street with Dom, okay. Yeah. And a dog comes running up to Dom and the dog doesn't have a leash on it. Do you get very upset at the owner for not having? I haven't. I haven't run into that situation, and I don't not. get mad when a dog goes up to him with a leash. I, I haven't run into the non-leash situation when it runs up to him on the leash. Every owner of a dog I've ever met has been very responsible with like, no, no, come on, come on, right, right. But Dom actually wants to like he he gets a little he likes animals, him, but he'll he'll pet the dog if the dog is friendly enough. Yeah, I just think there's some, and it happens more and more that there's some people that walk their dog without a leash that aren't very well trained, yeah, and I'd they say that's just unacceptable. They just I got assume, bit. I got bit by a dog two weeks ago, and they just what. They, yeah, yeah, he did. He, he did. What? Yeah. Why this, this dog? I was walking. I was walking to the gym in my apartment complex. This dog was off leash. It was like a little Boston Terrier. I was like, "Hey, buddy, what's up?" And they, hey, buddy, goes, and it like literally bit me <laughs> in the fucking thigh. I was ready to kick the thing off, and the owner was like, "No, no, Winston, no." And I was like, "She," I, I didn't realize Winston. it had bitten me. And then I walked by, and I had two little pierce marks on my on my thigh. Yeah. Wow. I, I well, I like I, I was worried I might get rabies. I had to put some polysporin on it. But you're what? right, polysporin, neosporin. No, I think it's called polysporin. It's like that cream that prevents, like you yeah. know, like uh, any yeah. kind of infections or yeah, something. neosporin. <laughs> right? I think you're mistaken here, Michael. That might be the Canadian version is the poly story. It might, it might be. <laughs> and, and the fact that the dog biting incident was oh, not documented. Oh, it's different stuff. Polysporin versus neons. New, polysporin is a double antibiotic available in various formulations, like ointments and gels. Okay, good. Glad we cleared that up. All right. All right. Maybe we I wish, we had, more, I wish we had more on the dog biting. That Mikey, did great. you? Did you see my tweet from I was flying into Chicago with Joey D? And do you believe this guy seriously, Michael, turned to me and turned to me and goes, Bob, I got to go to the bathroom. Do you know where? where's the bathroom? He asked me where the bathroom is. On the plane. After I, 
on the plane. Yeah, I saw and I looked yeah. at him and I yeah. said, Well, sometimes amazing. it's at the front and sometimes it's at the back. Absolutely. And sometimes amazing. they don't let you use the one in the front. And Bob had already been to the bathroom, so I, I thought it was a fair question. I you thought... know, when you walk down the aisle of a plane, I said this at Smig's house, you might as well be walking. It's like walking down like 10 miles. There's people there. The plane's moving. You're trying not to bump into people. It's it's a tedious, un, it's, not a, it's not an enjoyable walk to the point where I won't go to the bathroom on the plane unless it's a dire strength. Well, you know my feeling about airplane bathrooms, so. Yeah, oh, Mikey took another picture. Can we put oh, up, oh, take it, oh, can you go God. ahead and put up the picture of Mikey V flying on the plane? In the that was worse than the last time. <laughs> Bob, what about him trying to walk through the hotel lot, like the, the corridor? Yeah, his head was almost at the at the oh, roof. Oh, the yeah, sprinkler, yeah. the sprinkler could have given him a concussion. There's, there's a picture that somebody sent me from the barstool stream yesterday <laughs> when when that touchdown was scored, where Jersey yeah. Jerry's standing yeah. up, and you could yeah, that's big cat. Jerry big cat put that picture up. Yeah, and yeah. what's that? Big Cat put that up. He quote tweeted it and put laughing emoji, and my head was completely chopped off. And Mikey, you can't even see Mikey in the screen. He's above the camera. So it's just, it's all of Jersey Jerry. And then it's just, it's Mikey's torso as he's standing up cheering. Did you see Jerry? Did you see Jerry? (laughs) He addressed that directly today. He tweeted about that. Oh, he did? Well, yeah. Let's. He goes, he he goes, he, he said, uh, he goes, for all of you um, who said I'm short yesterday, I have a fun fact for you guys. The guy I was sitting next to at Bear Down Cuz is six foot seven. I don't know what else you want from me. I can't magically grow. That's what Jerry put out. <laughs> I tell you, Jerry man. I, after seeing the Don, after yeah, seeing Jersey Don's Jerry, great, makes, I said to Joe, I, I miss that guy so much, dude. I, I really do. To me, he's one of the funniest human beings I've ever met in my life. Like the, I was shocked how well behaved his kid is. I know. His kid's very – that was another thing that was very surreal for me was watching him as a father you for me. You were fascinated. It, what's that? You were fascinated. You couldn't yeah, stop re- watching. I really was. That was a really cool experience. It really was. Um, will you be fascinated when I have kids, Joe? Oh yeah, oh Joe, yeah. I will oh, be. Oh yeah. Un- and what do you mean, oh the- yeah, Mike. Oh, you don't oh, think I'll be a great Joe, dad, Joe? That's that's not the point. I just would love. I just can't wait to watch it. That will be the greatest show on turf. You're gonna be a great dad. I, I have I no doubt so about too. that. I have no doubt about that. I just think it's it's. I mean, no matter you're never gonna be prepared for as much as you think you're gonna be prepared. You're not. So it's gonna that- just be funny to watch. There's going to be so many crazy things that happen. It's just nuts. I mean, me and Jerry, really? when Jerry told me that yes. he was going to have a kid, we we talked about content right, right right away, how good content would be. I think it would be even better for Joe. Yeah. Michael. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you think about <laughs> you think about some of the things that Joe would say to the child on camera, and I think it would just be hysterical the way I just I'm curious to see how Joe will talk to the kid, to the baby, because I know I'll the way sure he talks to my children. Well behaved. Okay. I'll make sure my children are very well behaved. He's going to be feeding the baby like King Crab when the baby's like two years old and yeah. all types of beluga, ca- beluga caviar. Oh, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be a fun watch. Um, Okay, today, fellas, <laughs> let's head on over to our top five. Today, we are today we are doing today. top five movie villains. Um, This is somehow, some way, this is my recommend date um recommend you came up with this yeah i did yeah wow okay yeah i did very odd for you to go movie route i know i know i'm not doing myself a favor by the way i mean i i thought that i had been doing pretty good in the top fives i really had a good run going i got banged on that last one for the i i really i took a beating by not having the last one again Top oh, uh, midnight yeah. snacks. Midnight did snacks. I win that one? Did I oh, win no. that one? A lot no. of people even know. I, mean, no. I, I I crushed midnight snacks. It wasn't even close. It was yeah, like a runaway freight train. Yeah, he did. Oh, and I had yeah, had man. I had had the previous ones. I I fucked that one up bad. But but um, ticket was even given <clears> shit, <throat> and I stand by it. Me and Joe took shit for not allowing pizza, and I still stand by pizza is a meal. Pizza is not considered a snack. So as much yeah, as you I, include but, pizza, you open Pandora's box. You could do pasta. Yeah, you, could you do can. You can. Indian, you, could you could do, do whatever. Sandwiches. Yeah, no, because you that. know why? You know why that? You know why I disagree with that? Because pasta 
you need pizza is a snack. Once it's been consumed as the regular meal and it's just laying around and now it's cold pizza, it is a snack because a couple reasons. You don't need utensils. Once you have to get utensils, that makes it a non-snack. Once you well, have to sandwich, get... you could do with non. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sandwich. A, sand- a sandwich could be considered a snack. I feel no, like. oh come That's on, terrible. no, I don't agree with that, okay. Mikey. Okay, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is a meal. Yeah. No, yeah. you don't even fucking believe that. You no, don't believe I believe that. No, I do. I do. I. I <laughs> but, but what Joe said is true. No, you. You open if you do pizza, you open a whole new. I mean, then anything comes. To me, yeah, pizza, there's. Yeah. I think a midnight cold slice of pie that you grab right out of the fridge that's leftover pie. You grab one slice. I consider that a midnight snack. I, that's all I'm gonna say. Okay. Listen, that top five is over. We we've moved on. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's head on to the next one. This is gonna be um top five movie villains. That's gonna really I not like a whole this. lot. You like this? I do. I do. Okay. I love I, movies, um, so. I, I mean, I'll I'll start us off. I don't mind starting us off. Go ahead. Okay. I had to dig deep. Um, number five, give me um, give me Voldemort. Give me Voldemort from uh from Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's an iconic one. Um, number four, Fine, give me Mike Myers from Halloween. It's okay. Mike Myers from Halloween. Yes, Joseph. <laughs> Have you ever watched a single Halloween movie, Bob? Yeah, I mean, I watched enough of Halloween to know Mike Myers from like the one that I have in three. I don't I, the one that I have three. I don't remember a ton of I've seen it before, but I don't remember a ton of it. But mm. I just remember him being an iconic movie villain. Okay. You ready for number three? Sure. Number three, I got Darth Vader. I got Darth you Vader. You never watched Star Wars. I watched Star Wars, but bits and pieces of it. I haven't watched Star Wars top to bottom and remembered it. Like as how a kid, you, I, I as a kid, I I, had I think it's a good one, Bob. But I don't know how you can put him as top villains when you've never watched the full movie. Do, do you know why, Joe? Because I don't know if I've seen other movies with a. I don't know if I've seen a movie top to bottom with other villains that I know that well. As preposterous as that sounds, I will let it slide. Okay, knowing how horrific your movie knowledge is, I will. Now, Allow Here, that. Here's here's the here's the good thing, Joey D. Okay, these next two I could give you a lot about. These next two are villains okay. that that I that I really really enjoyed. Okay? okay, um, give me Bane with with Tom Hardy playing Bane. That to me, I I loved that. I thought was great. And then number one, uh, my all time favorite, Dark Knight Joker. That's fine. It's a good play. Heath 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 Ledger. Yeah, I I, I know. Okay. <laughs> I know. Bane okay, is a just, terrible one. Is it really? Yeah, I don't know. Of all play, time, he's not a very well. good villain. Oh, I, I thought he was terrific. I mean, I loved that. I thought he was terrific. Okay. All right. Okay. Didn't go over well. As as I I, I as yeah, we I think people well, I just think that people are gonna uh, yeah. I thank God. Joe, thank God he had Joker at one. Joker's a very good one. Yeah, because if he had no, but I'm saying if he had Bane and then didn't oh, back it up with Joker, there I figured I know when he said two, I figured I thought, one of those was Joker. I thought yes. Bane would be notoriously loved. I mean, people love him, no? No. I mean, Bob, no. he's not that great a villain. I mean, yeah, it, I, maybe think of it. he might have been good in the movie, but have you ever even heard of Bane in the Batman? You think of the Batman villains, you think Joker, Catwoman. Penguin, maybe Riddler, maybe even Two Face. Bane doesn't come till like way later. Yeah. Mike, would I, um, you disagree with me? I don't. Bane, no, I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm fully backing that play. The play no. of the play of the take, I should say, of of, of yeah. Bane. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I get it. I get it. I, I get why you're saying it. I just, I think it's, it's high number one. I just think there's better villains than that. I think that movie was considered like the worst one of all the Nolan Batman movies. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't know why I would recommend that top five. That went awful. That really did. <laughs> it's I, a good I, I, have, I have no issue with Voldemort, Mike Myers, Joker, or uh, Darth Vader at Yeah, but all. even like, but Joe said, and I, I get it. I don't know a ton about Voldemort. I don't know a ton. Like, I know enough, but I don't know a ton. Yeah, that went real bad. That went real bad. Mikey V will go to you. Damn. 
Do you know right, the, the backstory behind Darth Vader? Who's he the father of? He's Luke uh, Luke Skywalker's father. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. that, no, I'm that, telling you, I, I had seen Star Wars as a kid. I just don't remember. What is Darth Vader's actual name? That I couldn't get you. Okay. Yeah, that I... I mean, I would say Mr. Skywalker, if you ask me. (laughs) 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 Oh, my God. That's what I would say. That's what I would say. It's Bob, it's Anakin Skywalker. Anakin. Tell you, man, that is a... There's a movie. There's a movie that Mr. Made Skywalker up. is correct. Technically, that technically, went, that went real bad. That that went real. That will go down as that did not go well. That was not smooth. <laughs> Mikey V, we'll send it to you. <laughs> All right, give me uh, number five. No country for old men. Give me Anton Sugar. Give me Anton Sugar at number five. Uh, one of the most That's iconic. Gr- he was villains. ruthless. He was- yeah, he was great. Deciding your fate with a coin flip. Would he kill was- anyone at any time. Bob, I wish you watched yep. the movie, but a I know you have villain. it. A ruthless villain. Number four, I'm going to go with Hans Landa. Hans Landa from uh, Inglorious Bastards, uh, yeah. who plays the Nazi, obviously. That was one of the best acting jobs I've ever seen, period. That opening Let scene when he, when he takes oh. the... The, the Uzi and he just starts firing it. Up. I mean, it's just, it's heart gut wrenching. Yeah. Yeah. Just a perfect, perfect movie villain. Incredible. Number three, give me Hannibal Lecter. I'll go with Sir Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal Lecter. Uh, Bob does not watch any villain. of these movies. No, he hasn't. <laughs> He's just going to sit there and we're not going to, I'm not going to throw him under the bus. So uh, uh, Anthony Hopkins is a Hannibal Lecter. Number three. And then I got two of Bob's. I do. I have Joker, Heath Ledger, Joker at number two. And then I actually have Vader at one. I think Vader in 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 American cinema, I think Darth Vader is the most iconic villain character in, in cinematic history. I do. Uh, American cinematic history. I, I, I absolutely do. So Vader at one, Joker two. Ledger's Joker. That's good. That's a good list. Yeah, we did. We'll, we'll, we'll head, we'll head Bob over. Bob has here. no comment on that list. None. I got nothing. I got That's nothing fine. to give. That's I got, fine. It's, it's, you gave, it's, you gave everything with the Mr. Skywalker comment. It's, you're, you're it's good. your show, Mikey. I got nothing. You're good. You're good. Joseph? I have, um, at number five, I have Michael Myers. I think Michael Myers is, I, by the way, I've watched tons of the Halloween movies. What's the name of the chick from True Lies who's in it? She's Jamie in, Lee um, Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis is fantastic. Even in the in the newer one, she's like older and she's like just coming at him. The movies are great. He just kill. He's on a wrecking. Uh, he, it's an awesome movie. Michael Myers at five, and number four, I have yours. I have Anton from No Country for Old Men. Yep. This guy is just the epitome of a psychopath. Yes. The fact that he even like the one guy, remember the part of the movie where the guy who's driving the, the truck with the pigeons in it pulls over to help him out on the road. And the next thing you see, he's washing the back of the, of the, cause he's killed the guy. Like he's just yep. got gut wrenching. Um, and number three, I have Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger to me is, he is like, you can't escape him. He's in your dreams. He is just, oh, it's, it's, it's terrifying. He's a terrifying villain. Number three, Freddy Krueger. Number two, I have Darth Vader. Um, I think I think he's just like now. The crazy thing to that's, me, that's Mister Skywalker to you, Joe. Yeah, Mister Skywalker. <laughs> the crazy thing, why didn't why didn't put him number one? I think is because at the end of the Return of the Jedi, he actually turns and becomes good again and saves Luke. So I have him he does he spot. does he does save Luke, but he really does wait to the point where he he dies. But Before in his last that. breathing moment, he actually turns does. good. So that's why I don't have a number one. At number one, I have Joker. And I think the best Joker performance is Heath yes, Ledger. Yeah. That being said, I do think that the new Joker that was done by... Um, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix was more of a dark, like very depressing, psychotic role, which was fantastic as well. Um, but yeah, Joker to me... He's just a no matter who he's played by, even just his presence, he's just evil. And his 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 entire existence is to kill Batman. It's just it's a perfect role. At um the and then I put for honorable mention, 
I put actually, I, it was tough because I I, I, did, I went back and forth on this. But I actually put, uh, I was thinking about putting Hannibal Lecter. I actually put Jack Torrance from The Shining. That's a good one. That's a real good one. That's a real I good put one. him as my honorable mention. I honorable thought, one. by the way, you want to talk good performances. Jack Nicholson. I mean, Jack amazing. Nicholson. Yeah, I mean, come on. Amazing. Yeah. And by the way, Bob, that is a movie. When we talked about it, by the way, Mikey V and I talked about this which we should introduce in a, in a later episode. We are going to start making movie suggestions for Bob, like must watch movies, like regardless that if it comes up in conversation or passing. Right. No need for it. a review. No need for a review. No or review. Just, just, just 10, 10 movies that I should see just so yes. I can get Correct. a part of the conversation. Correct. Yeah, look, Correct. It, it, we're it looking out to for not, you. I have nothing to offer this conversation and um, you know, it sucks. <laughs> it, it's a shitty feeling. Um, honorable mention, I, I got the Monstars from Space Jam. Oh, my God. Because, <laughs> I, look, Space Jam's one. Yo, Space Jam. Oh, my, my God. God. Say what you want. You can laugh all you want. You can laugh all you want. Space Jam's a, a an all-timer, uh, man. <laughs> the Monstars weren't bad, though, really. It was the yeah, guy. They were, the head of course guy. they were bad. No, it was they the guy making them do all that. They oh, were, the they were Joe, actually Mike, all right. Mikey. The the monsters were scumbags. These guys okay. were total scum. They played dirty. They um they made the guy the guy made them. He was holding them captive on Moron Mountain or whatever it was. Well, yeah, my, yeah, regardless of who they were made for, they were scumbags. Yeah, There's a lot well. of scumbag parents out there who created scumbags, but the kids <laughs> still a scumbag. Bob yeah. Bob's list for I can't believe you suggested this. This is hilarious. I know what, what a bonehead move, man. I should. Uh, it's a great. It's a great top five. Yeah. No, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Honorable mention for me, um, I, I it was a toss up really between three guys, but I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Hans Gruber. I'm gonna go with Hans Gruber, who's the 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 villain from the original Die Hard, obviously uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, and he's just an iconic iconic villain. So, Joey, uh, do you have any Gruber issues with that? Me. Um, no, I think that's a good one. You know who else I was gonna do, and Bob again would. not uh, there's no chance Bob has ever watched this movie, but it's a classic and she is awful. It like it just makes you want to hate her. Have you ever watched One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? The yeah, nurse, nurse, ratchet? nurse Ratchet. Yeah. Oh, no, she actually, is. My my she dad showed me that. Horrific. Oh, there yeah, you go. My dad had you showed watched me that, that movie. Yeah, Jack Nicholas. Nicholson. 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 Jack, yeah. oh, Jack Nicholson would be the golfer. Oh, yeah, that's a real bear. tough look. The what a tough look. Flew over the cuckoo's nest featuring the golden bear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the old Ohio oh, State Buckeye that was himself. Tough, Jack, man. PGA approved. PGA what a, approved. What, a, what, a, what a tough 10 minutes that was. That was a tough 10. That really was. <laughs> that was a tough 10. Um, ladies and gentlemen, fellas, I, I, I tell you, that was an all time weekend for the boys. Uh, more comment to come, but, but content to come, uh, Joey, these guys hand up Jody. I just want to say none of us actually bought this, but we would all collectively agree if we had to buy one thing, the breezy invitational tournaments oh, are yeah, a yeah. must oh. buy, Thanks. must, Thanks. must buy. You know, what's so nice knowing that people spend a lot of money for these things. And when you see that they're, and, and you feel that they are truly bought in, that they're getting their money's worth. And with the open bar the night prior and how much fun people were having, that's a very fulfilling feeling because you get yes. worried going into it. You want it to be worth it. That was unbelievable. It was great seeing you boys. I love you boys. I appreciate you boys. Like, comment, subscribe to the brilliantly dumb show. We will see you next time.